this video, we will learn how the Fisher 1098 pressure regulator works through this animation. The 1098 is a pilot operated regulator, so it consists of a main valve, shown here installed on the flow line, plus a pilot on the left. Upstream of the pilot is a pilot supply filter, which protects the pilot from debris. Some important components of the main valve are the seat ring seal, which is a stationary rubber component that enables the 1098 to achieve bubble tight shutoff. The valve plug, which has a sharp edge to achieve a leak free seal when pushed downward by the spring into the seat ring seal. Last is the diaphragm, which is connected to the valve plug, moving the valve plug up and down to throttle the 1098's flow. When a higher pressure is sent to the bottom side of the diaphragm, the valve plug will be pushed upward, allowing flow to pass downstream. Shown now is the main valve with elevated loading pressure, shown in green, on the bottom side of the diaphragm. You can see how this pressure has pushed the diaphragm upward, which moved the valve plug away from the seat ring seal. On the pilot, the most important components are the disc, holding back the red inlet pressure, the spring, which can be adjusted to achieve the desired outlet pressure set point, the pilot diaphragm, which is watching outlet pressure shown in blue. The final component to note is the restrictor, which is a small opening that enables the main valve to close by bleeding this green loading pressure downstream. Starting when the 1098 is in a lockup position, meaning at zero flow conditions, let's see what happens when the downstream equipment begins consuming gas. Because the regulator is not meeting the increased flow demand, the blue outlet pressure decreases. The pilot detects this decrease in outlet pressure below its set point. The pilot spring is now exerting more force upward than the outlet pressure is exerting downward. So the pilot's diaphragm moves upward, moving the disc to the right because of the lever. This small movement by the pilot allows the inlet pressure to flood into the loading pressure chamber, increasing the loading pressure high enough that it overcomes the main valve spring. This opens the main valve, supplying the increased flow demand while holding outlet pressure slightly below set point. Before we go through that motion again, notice the order of events. First, the outlet pressure changed. Second, the pilot responded to the outlet pressure change by repositioning. Third, the loading pressure responded to the pilot repositioning. And fourth, the main valve responded to the loading pressure change. It is the same order of events on every style of pilot operated regulator, both during opening and closing. The pilot, which is the brains, sees a change in outlet pressure and makes the main valve respond. With that in mind, let's watch the animation again. The outlet pressure is decreasing below set point. The pilot notices and is now sending a pneumatic signal to the main valve that it should open because the downstream demand isn't being satisfied. Next, let's see what happens when the downstream equipment stops consuming gas. First, the downstream pressure increases because the regulator is still open, exceeding the flow demand. The pilot diaphragm senses this increase in pressure above its set point. The downward force from the outlet pressure now exceeds the upward force from the spring, moving the diaphragm downward and pushing the pilot disc to the left and closed, preventing the red inlet pressure from entering that green loading pressure chamber. Next, the restrictor bleeds the loading pressure downstream. The main valve now overpowers the reduced loading pressure, closing the main valve and matching the zero downstream demand while holding out the pressure slightly above set point at the lockup pressure. We hope that you benefited from this explanation on the operation of the Fisher 1098 EGR pressure reducing valve. Please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this one.